Here I'm going to show you how to cut open an AC power cord so we can attach it to our power supply. So first you're going to take the female end and cut it off um, as close to the outlet as possible. So you have the longest cord possible. Um, you can toss out the female connector. Here we can see there are three wires inside an AC power cord. Um, you're going to want to gently take off the outer sheath and I do this by scoring with the wire cutters and then bending back and forth to pop off the end. You don't want to cut too deeply because then you could be cutting into the wires and if the wrong wires are touching each other then you can have major issues and a fire. So you want to just gently remove that outer sheath um, then you have three wires on the inside. The green wire is ground, the black wire is power, and the white wire is neutral. Um, so this is just sped up a little bit. We're going to use the wire cutters to cut off about an inch um, of sheath. We're left with the three wires. You want to twist them up so they're easy to wrap around the screws in the power supply. Um, and then we're going to cut off that extra little white thread that comes on some power cords. And that's it. Okay, so now we're going to be connecting the, the power cord to the power supply, which converts AC power to 5 volt DC that goes to the LEDs. You want to make sure that little red switch on the side is 115 volts for the US. So first we're going to connect the ground terminal of the power supply to the V minus output of the power supply. So that's just going to give us a common ground between the DC and the AC parts of the circuit, um, which is just a best practice. I've seen power supplies work where you just have the three um, load neutral and ground wires going into it and just have the 5 volt uh, output and ground coming out, but this is just a safe uh, precaution. Um, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit as we go through this. Okay, so now we're going to take the green ground wire and connect it to the ground terminal of the power supply. And we're also going to grab in that jumper cable that is currently in the V minus to also connect that to the ground terminal. Um, you can see that the terminals go from right to left, load, neutral, and then ground. So again, the green wire goes into the ground, the white wire goes into the neutral, and then the black wire goes into the load um, and we're going to be wrapping the wires around the screws and then we're going to be screwing it tightly down into the power supply. Okay, so now we have our wire connected. Um, the next step is going to be plugging it in and calibrating it. Okay, so now we have it turned on and we're going to be turning this little white screw next to the green light to make sure that the power supply is actually outputting exactly 5 volts. This is probably not necessary, but you can see that it is 5.05 um, volts. Okay, so we're just going to screw, turn the screw a little bit until it outputs exactly 5. And then we are done calibrating the power supply, and the next step is going to be connecting the DC output. Okay, so here we have two wires coming out of the power supply from the V plus and the V minus, which are going to be plus 5 volts and ground or zero. And those wires are going into this terminal block. 
So the point of a terminal block is to have multiple outputs for the same input. All of the terminals on the top are not connected to each other. They're connected vertically from the top to the bottom. So we're going to connect all these top ones. So we have five volts across half the top, ground across the other half, and then we'll be able to have 12 outputs coming out of the bottom corresponding to either ground or 5 volt. We need all of these individual outputs because of something called voltage drop, which is voltage being lost in the circuit due to the internal resistance of all of the wires and in this case LEDs circuits. So after about 60 LEDs there's going to be significant enough voltage drop um, such that the following LEDs will be dim or not light up at all. So we're going to want to send an individual wire with 5 volts and ground to each set of 60 LEDs. Um, the data can flow through all of the LEDs in series, but we're going to have to have an individual power and an individual ground for every group of 60. This is something that's probably doesn't come up if you're working with a small amount of LEDs with an Arduino, but when you're building large-scale LED displays, this is very important because the LEDs won't light up. Okay, so now we have the terminals all connected to each other, and what we're going to want to do now is to confirm that all the wires are connected. So we're just going to take the um, voltmeter and check that the difference between all of the positives and all of the grounds are 5 volts or about 5 volts. There's going to be some voltage drop because of the wires, um, but as long as it's close, they'll be totally fine. So you can see I'm touching the ground to one of the grounds and then going through all the voltages to make sure they're all close to 5. And then I'm going to do the same thing to make sure all the grounds are connected by leaving the voltmeter on one voltage uh, pin and checking all of the individual ground pins. If you are still wondering how this terminal block works, you can kind of see what is happening now that I'm touching the other side. So going from top to bottom of the screen, the pins are connected to each other. So all of the bottom left six pins are going to be zero or ground, and all the bottom right six pins are going to be five volts. And the last step is to just pop on the little plastic protector that stops those uh, pins from accidentally being connected.